Hi, this is Laura Mellisley. This is my little cat, Junie. She doesn't like to be held a uh, super lot. Um, anyway, welcome, welcome, welcome. I am so excited to have you. Today I am talking with Julie. Julie is one of my students in the GAPS Up Level Intensive. Um, she also did a human design reading with me. Uh, Julie is absolutely incredible. She has been through so much and as so many of us have, we all have our own stories. And so in that way, I feel like we can all see part of ourselves in Julie and part of Julie is in all of us. <laughs> and so yeah, Julie, I just want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart for sharing your story with us. Um, Julie talks about how going through the gaps up level intensive has prepared her not only physically, but spiritually and emotionally as well. And then human design has really kind of like solidified and confirmed her own personal way that she needs to navigate her own healing. Um, I'm not going to say a ton up front. I'm just going to kick it over to our interview. And yeah, I'm really glad you got to meet Juniper. She just kind of came in here, but Juniper is the love of my life. <laughs> All right. Um, without further ado, here we go. All right, hello, I am Lauren Meadowsweet. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I am here today with Julie. Um, Julie is just, oh man, what are you? A gem, you're a gem. And um, <laughs> so Julie was kind enough to come on and share about her GAPS experience, how I met Julie. I felt like the first time we saw each other on video, I was like, I feel like I'm meeting my pen pal. <laughs> Um, but like, I think the first time actually that you like directly contacted me, you had gotten into the gaps up level intensive, but you like, were having trouble actually getting in. And so you're like, what, what do I do? But then like the conversation like opened from there and we always just kind of like seemed to be on the same page or you had a question and I had like just made a video about it. And even just to like the really like nuanced parts of like, you know, you're getting um, some amalgams removed and then there was like a person drilling outside my window and you're like, oh man, there's just like a lot of synchronicities. And so I asked Julie to come on here today to share just about her experience with GAPS, kind of like what led her here and then just like her experience walking through it. And um, so yeah, I'm so grateful uh, that you're coming on today, Julie. Thank you. And yeah, Julie is just wonderful. I know too that it's so powerful when we hear about other people who are doing this because like, yeah, you're not alone. It's not just you. You're not going crazy, even though it feels like it. It's, we're, there are a lot of us actually, and we're all over the world. And so I just feel like the more we can get like everyone's experiences out there, the more that, um, you know, we'll know that we're not alone and that it's perfectly normal to feel overwhelmed and lost, but that that's no, that doesn't mean that you like stop trying or stop going. It just means the journey evolves. And so I'm really curious and excited to learn about yours. So if we just open up with like how you came across gaps, what made you kind of realize that you needed gaps, um, and then like, how did you find me? I'm really curious about that too. Um, but yeah, like what, how did it all, without like, you know, obviously it's gonna have to be some kind of nutshell version because we yeah. all have very long health histories, but yeah, whatever you feel called to share. Well, um, basically I started communicating with my sister in law in Germany. We hadn't communicated in a while. And she was having a lot of success eating a keto kind of carnivore type diet. 
And uh, so I decided to try it. And then she sent me a, uh, she started talking about meat stock. And she sent me a video with Natasha Campbell McBride. Yeah. And, um, and so after I watched that, it's just like, you know, click, 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 you know, the bell started going off. And, um, and then from there, I found your video, uh, some of your videos on YouTube. And then, um, yeah, so that's how it began. So did you find like a video about, I feel like a lot of people find me through meat stock and like, I get like a Google report every month and it's like, everyone finds you through your meat stock <laughs> resources. <laughs> so did you find me like, did you like just like search like meat stock and then I came up? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I might've put in gaps. Uh -huh. yeah, I, I can't remember exactly. Uh -huh. But, um, but then I found um, your, your program your videos and I started looking at uh your introduction video I watched that and then I thought yeah I really this is a lot more complicated than I thought like I thought it was just meat stock but there's a lot more involved and the, it's like the deeper I go the deeper it gets uh that's why i'll sound like an oxymoron but anyway <laughs> well, it's true to me i'm like i know exactly what you're talking about like, the deeper I mean. you go the deeper you go yeah you know so you know that's how how i found you cool and um what were some like obviously nobody like goes on gaps just because they feel like it so <laughs> um what were like some physical health things that you were like looking to improve or um you know address on gaps well um i my son was killed in 2014 and for two years literally i vomited regularly and um had diarrhea at the same time so that was real fun, trying to get to the bathroom in time when it would hit. And I just could not, no matter if I meditated, no matter what I did, I could not get my stomach to quit quivering and shaking. I'm just noticing 333 three, three, uh, on the, that's the time I got the call about his transition. So it's like, hi, Luke. It's always him showing up. Hi, Luke. <laughs> yeah, hey. So, um, yeah, so then I, I had just a lot of burning in my stomach and I had colonoscopies. I had, um, lots of different tests. I went to so many doctors. I did, uh, acupuncture. I did all these different things and everything would come back clean, but like, you know, my blood work was okay. And, and I, and I was telling my doctors, there's something physically wrong. And um, when I guess they couldn't find anything, you know, one of them sent me to a, said, you need to see a psychiatrist. You've been through this big trauma and, you know, and I thought, you know what, maybe I am a little whacked out. Maybe I do. So uh, I found the best one in Atlanta, the, you know, the one that was like over all the hospitals, went to him, spoke with him for, they had given me, I think, Zoloft. I tried to take it for two days and I looked like a drug animal and I quit. And so I went to this, this psychiatrist uh, and I talked to him for a couple of hours and then he looked at me and he said, Miss Spencer, um, you do not need anything they have to offer you. They do not know how to deal with grief. And uh, you really need to find a really good MD and be able to talk to them. And I said, well, do you know one? And he said, I'm still trying to find one. And I thought, oh great, I'm screwed. Uh, <laughs> 
so that's kind of, you know, and then one thing led to another and I did yoga retreats and I did all this stuff and uh, I had to take Prilosec just so my stomach wouldn't burn. So I was on that for six years and um, I kept trying to get off it, but after three days, my stomach would be in such pain. I, it was crazy. So um, it's like, I could not get off this. And um, so let me see what happened. I, I found out about breast implant illness and I had breast implants and a lot of my symptoms uh, besides my stomach and insomnia uh, were started happening in like 2019 then was uh, this ting tingling and burning and little bumps that would come up under my arms and pinching and almost heat like hot lava. And this has never really gone away. Uh, sometimes it flares really, really, really bad. And it seems like each flare is getting worse. But uh, then it will kind of go dormant like in a cycle. So anyway, I, I went to my um, general practitioner and I basically yelled at her and dropped the F-bomb a few times. My eyes got this big, like who the hell you think you are, lady? But she brought her computer. I was like, five years of looking for this and you can't find anything. You're not fucking doing the right test. And I want to answer when I walk out of here. So she was not too happy with me. And uh, she pulled up her little computer and um, she started naming off tests. You know, lung x-ray, this, that. And I, and I just intuitively, I'd say, test me for that. Don't test me for that. I'll do that one, you know. And so basically I ordered all my own tests. <laughs> Went along to probably get me out of her office. <laughs> it's like, whatever I want, whatever you want, this lady's scared. Yeah. Just, yeah. <laughs> and so then like, they do not like informed patients or patients that really are their own advocate and stand up for their self. I don't think, not mostly, but anyway. So then it came back and she said, you know, whatever it is, we'll have a plan. And I believe in a plan and, It'll be okay. And I was like, great, you know? So then I got the test back and uh, it came through the portal, the chart, and uh, they didn't call me. And I had uh, Epstein Barr off the chart and Lyme off the chart. And so when I tried to call her, she was too busy to talk to me. And, and I finally got her practitioner, nurse practitioner. And she said, well, just stay home and drink water and rest. I mean, you have to do a little more than that, but and I was like, are you kidding me? After all these years and all this extra money for the blood work and all that, and this is what you got. And so then I realized I'm on my own. And so then, you know, it's just been, um, trying different things. I ate a fruitarian diet, ate only fruit for like six months. I uh, went to, you know, lymphatic drainage massages. I went to other doctors, had other tests. I was misdiagnosed with diverticulitis. Never had it. They gave me some really powerful uh, medications, Leviquin and Flagyl, that made me hallucinate my ass off. You know, and burned my stomach like it was acid going in. But they said, You do this, you'll be all well. So I thought, Okay. And then, you know, come to find out it was a misdiagnosis. It was, ne I never had that. And yeah. uh, so the doctor screamed at me, saying, You know, you, you have diverticulosis, not litis. And I said, Well, this came from your people. <laughs> and she was like yelling at me. So anyway, um, it's been a real journey <laughs> trying to figure out, you know, I know that stress and trauma had, have played a big role, but I think there were already underlying issues in my health uh, that it exacerbated and just, you know, blew up when the trauma happened. That's kind of how I perceive it too, is that, you know, there's no trauma like losing a child and i'm so fucking sorry that you had to go through that um 
And I'm so glad that Luke is here on this interview right now. Yeah, how about that? <laughs> um, but yeah, so, but that's kind of like how I see it too, is that, you know, there's probably some underlying issues and then this like profound like stress and trauma can totally just like kick you over the edge. And um, something Dr. Becky Plotner says is that she's like, you can have like, you know, just like imagine a pregnant woman um, she can be like the most crunchy granola person ever, which is funny because granola, I don't perceive as healthy. <laughs> but you know what I mean? You know what I mean? Um, and, but if she like has like profound like stress or like chronic stress and trauma, the baby can come out, will just come out like head to toe covered in eczema. Like that's like, that's the impact that stress and trauma can have on the body. And so what it seems like is that that the loss of your baby really just kind of like kicked everything into okay now I'm fighting for my life my own life mm -hmm. and then like finding kind of like the strength and the wherewithal to keep going and you know through this process of what we call the medical system <laughs> um sorry I had to go through that too uh, and like getting all the wrong drugs and stuff oh my gosh but yeah not surprising really and um and then kind of like coming out of it being like I need to be my own advocate um I I'm on my own right and it's funny that you're actually the third fruititarian that I <laughs> <laughs> So I feel like people who come to GAPS, it's like, yes, I've tried everything. And there are people who are like willing to try everything, you know, they're like, will it help me? Um, and so I, I, that's kind of like the magic of GAPS people I see is that they're kind of unwilling to take no for an answer, even though they've been through so much shit and that they are legitimately willing to like dive in if this can like truly help them. And that's kind of like what I see in you right now. It's just like all right, like, let's do this. Um, I don't know, like, how long you had been watching my stuff before you bought into the up-level intensive, but you have access to every single instructional video that I've made, and so it's just, like, these are the kind of people who are, like, super serious about healing themselves and doing gaps correctly and, like, not wanting to waste any more time. Um... And like, you were kind enough to give me feedback on this, that, I guess that's another way we interacted was, was like, will you like fill out like this, or like the couple of these, some of these questions, like I really just, I'm really passionate about like showing up and like serving in a way that like needs to happen. Obviously I'm like going to be true to like my energy and myself, but like, yeah, how can I be like, the most, how can this be like the most supportive within this container? And so you really helped me with that because um, you're like, this is, a, this is a lot. So can we, can we talk about like kind of your sensitivity um, that like, even though you have access to like how to make meat stock correctly and that you know that you're supposed to drink Dr. Natasha says to drink like five cups a day, but like you're not there yet. Can you kind of talk about your experience um, implementing some of these like basic components of the GAPS diet and like what that specifically looks like for you? Because I feel like that's really important just because a lot of people start off not really being able to tolerate much of even kind of like the baseline things. And so I feel like that'd be really helpful for other people to here well you know honestly it it all felt overwhelming yeah and I'm like you mean I gotta do this now <laughs> what and oh my god and feeling like I couldn't do it and then actually making my first pot of meat stock and then being like oh my god I did it you know like yay <laughs> you did it did it you know and like the liposomal vitamin C, like making that and being like, you know, I can't do that. And then doing it. And uh, so now I'm looking at, you know, making some fermented, uh, you know, 
what is it, yogurt, kefir whey, going, oh, I can't do that. It's so complicated. And then go, but you did the other things, right? So, um, you know, what, I think one of the things that helped me a lot was uh, going into a carnivore diet. I started at the end of January and I had about five weeks of diarrhea. And, uh, you know, like it really cleansed me out and then it like stopped and I was more regular than I've ever been in my life with the bowel movements all of a sudden. And I felt like I got up one day and I was like, wow, it's like, I felt like a tiger, you know, it was like, wow, I felt this energy inside me that I hadn't felt. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I was like, woo, you know, uh, it was interesting. And, um, and after three weeks, I was able to quit the Prilosec. Amazing miracle from three weeks of eating just, you know, animal, uh, meat, meat, meat. And, uh, and so that's one of the things that really opened my mind to the gaps. Mm -hmm. And uh, because I feel like we've been so programmed that meat will kill you <laughs> mm -hmm. and that it's so bad for you and stuff. So, um, so then I, I started the meat stock. Uh, I've been doing this about gaps, I would say about four months. Okay. I made my first meat stock. And I just thought, oh, it's really flavorful and really rich and it feels good in my tummy and like, kind of like I'm being sued by a mother, right? And then about a few days, well, a couple of days into drinking it, I just started feeling really weird, kind of like tired and um, kind of like I was on a drug or something. Like I felt kind of dizzy and like out of it and I thought what is going on with me and uh and I was getting a lot of anxiety and then I started having this pain across my chest that I swore I was having a heart attack and um I I just thought well this is it like should I go to the hospital and then I thought hell I'm not going there yeah. <laughs> and so um because I had had thought I had was having a heart attack years before and they did the iodine the dye for the contrast and I had a severe allergic reaction so well, they'll do that to me again I'm not going there I just have to pray and take my chances and then the next day it was like all better like just about gone but I talked to uh Becky Plotner who I'm working with who I found on your site good uh she said I I told her what was going on, going on with me. And she said, that's a yeast die off. And that's a typical yeast die off. And I was like, what? Cause I started out and I was like, oh, this is so good. So I was drinking like a cup and a half immediately. So, you know, um, so that happened. <laughs> so now I'm very like, you know, I'm just doing a little bit. I'm like, I was up to about a cup and then I just made meat stock two days ago. And I realized my husband had been kind of helping me at the last part of the meat stock and he had been draining the meat stock through a drainer to you know, just, and I thought, well, I think I'm supposed to be having all that. I don't think you're supposed to drain it. It doesn't say to drain it. Right. And so, um, I thought, yeah, but it worked anyway, very powerfully. Please. But I thought, no, I don't think you're supposed to. So I um, just now started with the meat stock without draining it, any stuff out. And so now I'm doing like a half a cup and being very careful with it because I figure it's probably more powerful. So. Are you talking about, because there's two different ways on the meat stock video, right? There's like the way you do it in gaps intro where you like kind of like take everything out and then you blend all like the squishy bits back that's in. What yeah. That's what you're doing. Okay. Yeah. Well, cool. because and then there's like a full gaps 
that's that you do kind of like pour it through the strainer but it's oh. it's um it's all about where you're at because the way that you're doing it is definitely the most powerful and so you're you're also and we'll kind of get into this but you're like also using your intuition or like kind of like what feels good to you and like navigating this process which is so important um well now that i'm looking back on it i'm thinking well maybe since i had that much die off with even straining it it was good i started that way yeah so and <laughs> yeah and so there's yeah there's two different ways to do it where are you on intro or full gaps i feel like that's a good question <laughs> i don't even know you don't know <laughs> because, because well here's what i'm on i'm on all meat like okay not have any vegetables any dairy no any, plant gaps no i'm on no that's what it's called no plant gaps yeah come on okay so yeah i do feel like that kind of goes into i feel like it's kind of like pre-introduction diet but the introduction diet too is kind of based around like everything's like cooked in this stock and since you are really sensitive to it that it's probably kind of like a hybrid We'll just say you're on no plant gaps. Um, but yeah, like I go into that in the meat stock video too about like how, just to like clarify for everybody who watches that um, when you drink meat stock and it's prepared correctly, um, it's so thick, right? Like when you put it in the fridge and you like try to get it out of the jar, it like sometimes my meat stock won't even like I literally need to get a spoon, like it won't come out of. It won't come out of the jar. Um, oh, I'm totally using a spoon. And That's it's, it out. yeah, yeah. And it's like, it's like literally like glue. And so wow. it, these like yeast tendrils, yeast like sprout. Did Becky tell you this too? That yeast like sprouts tendrils when it's growing a lot and it, they like push through the walls of your intestines and they've found like, like, I don't know if it's what kind of, People who do like autopsies and stuff have found like yeast tendrils up to like four feet long in people, which is her horrifying. Um, <laughs> and the meat stock will like cut its ten the head off. It'll cut like the tender off basically, and then the yeast starts dying, and then you feel like shit. And so when you're like, oh, I like feel funny, you know, <laughs> I feel weird. It's like, well, every time a yeast cell dies, it emits 176 toxic gases. And so that's, you're feeling dizzy, you're feeling nauseous, you're not feeling like you can like get out of bed. It's really interesting that you said you felt dizzy because I was talking to somebody else who is in the up-level intensive as well. And she said for three weeks, she was too, too dizzy to get out of her chair. And then finally she got out, but like it got better, but she's like, I didn't even feel like, like a hundred percent better than I could literally just like get up out of the chair, you know, but it was just yeah. like, that's sign of like major toxicity leaving the body, which is also why like the detox support is so important. And then also honoring the meat stock. It's like, oh, this stuff is so good. It's good for me. So I'm going to drink as much as I can. And like, eventually that's where we want to get you on gaps, but at the beginning, it can look so much different and so much slower than we realize because it's like, actually, like you just need like a half a cup of meat stock and anything more than that is like way too much for your body to handle right now. But you're really having like a Herxmer reaction or what they call, you know, just like die off. Uh, people call it like a healing reaction sometimes where it's just like, you know, this is actually what toxicity looks like when it's leaving your body. Um, and that it, it's not necessarily at the pace that we would like. Um, that was another thing you said because the up-level intensive, it's like you have access to basically all the, all the methods that I use to get myself out of, you know, a different version of rock bottom. And you're like, this is all so much. I can't implement this right now. Cause there's like a suggested timeline of like, oh, you can like watch these videos and then you compare these things and then watch these videos and compare these things. And I, yeah, I was like, 
I feel like I need to clarify that that's completely fine if you're not following the timeline. That is just a suggestion and it's for like, you know, a very certain person. I realize at this point that's like really like active and gung ho, but also can tolerate meat stock. I mean, in, in the amounts and whatever, but I just want to echo that when I was at my lowest, I could, I think I could drink like a cup of meat stock. Um, so I just, my heart goes out to you and I just want to send you love from across the country because like, yeah, that shit is scary. It's scary when you're at, when you actually start healing yourself because it looks different than what you thought that it would. You're like, oh, if I'm healing, I should be feeling exponentially better or like it should be like a linear path, like up. And that's not, that's not how it is. Would you agree? <laughs> I would agree and it you know it makes you question like am I doing the right thing is this really working uh oh my god I've been through such suffering can I can I even do this do I even want to do this and um I think you know that's why you know I contacted Becky the, <laughs> A practitioner to help me because uh, I needed more I don't know some one-on-one -on -one advice on what like this is happening that's happening you know like what's happening <laughs> you know I agree and I, I mean that's why I sing her praises so much because it's like I had and I I that's like what the up level intensive is, is like I have like this basis of knowledge, right? So I felt like I had like a huge leg up in, in seeing her. And so it's like, we really could like pinpoint, okay, like I'm making meat stock correctly, but I drank a cup and now I like can't get out of bed. Somebody like needs to individually help me decide what to do, you know? And so I was like, right. I wanna give people kind of the foundation that I had going in to Becky knowing that like so that they have like the potential to get the results that I was able to get and like I like your videos because they give a really great overview of a lot of the different protocols and you know I would say healing remedies and you know even though I'm not have not implemented a lot of them yet. Um, um, it gives me a good idea of, you know, and helping me prepare mentally and, you know, buying the things I need to buy to have it and for when I am ready, you know. So, yeah, that's, you know, it kind of gives you an overview. And of course, yeah. a lot of technical too. But I think what's been very surprising to me is how powerful food can be. <laughs> I'm like, you are got to be kidding me, you know, um, that this drinking this cup of this, cup and a half of this can do this. That's mm -hmm. incredible. It, it is. <laughs> Have you start? Oh, yeah, because you're not doing um, the fermented veggies. Are you doing fermented brines? Not yet. Okay. So that'll be, yeah, that'll be, that's like on the horizons for you. And that'll and be the dairy. first. Yeah. And dairy. Dairy. Oh, yeah, you're not doing not dairy. Yeah. That makes uh -huh. sense. Cause yeah, you're a sensitive soul. Uh, yeah. But yeah, I think like on no plants, on no plant gaps, um, fermented brine is the first plant you'd introduce, but who knows when you that know will what? be. Hold on, I'm sorry to do this. I have got like in my computer, I just got a thing that said it's gonna die if I don't plug it in. <laughs> Can you hold on one second? Yes, I hold on. Sorry, that's good. I'll pause the recording. Okay, so we're back. I don't completely remember what you're talking about. Um, oh, yeah, we're talking about like you're on no plants, and yeah, the, there's like a process of like reintroducing plants and stuff. Um, and that's like all, I mean, you're, you're four months in, so this is, this was like actually an incredibly vulnerable time for me on my journey, four months in, because four months is, 
four months is a really like significant amount of time to be on gaps. I think we can both agree that this is not just something that like casually happens. It requires a lot of effort and intention. And at four months, I was pretty bad still. <laughs> um, and it was, it was kind of this like, crux moment where it was like yeah do I keep going because I've been at this thing for four months and I still feel like absolute shit and um I think something that was huge for me was realizing how long it actually takes to heal um but I really only learned that through experience like living through it and I think if I'll, I'll link the interview with Becky too when you kind of, she, you kind of talk about like well, what else would I do at this point um yeah. and so you just keep going um but yeah you're super early in your journey um and yeah like a lot of the like the information and like the, even like the technical aspects of how to repair um you know food and get ready you know you're talking about like I'm not like quite ready for the enemas yet and stuff like that um it because yeah you're just you haven't like implemented it because you're going at your own pace which i think is i want to just put that as a like a public service now so that's really important but like whenever you need it it is there um have you i'm really i'm really just curious have you like watched all of the videos or are you just kind of like watching them at the pace of like what you feel ready for right because too much information before we're ready isn't necessarily a good thing and so i'm just wondering like how you've navigated it you know well when i first got the videos i i did over a period of a week or so i watched them all like mm -hmm. to a day until and i was, well, I was completely overwhelmed you binged it <laughs> yeah but i also you know it gave me a good overview at the same time of what I was kind of walking into and what GAPS is about. And uh, some of them I've watched a couple of times. And then, you know, then I went back and when I was starting to make my first meat stock, I watched that again. And so uh, I went ahead and ordered certain things like I ordered kefir grains and I ordered a strainer for the brines and I thought oh, I'm going to jump in and do all this and then um I realized no I'm not <laughs> I'm just gonna do one thing at a time you know and uh so but so yeah I'm glad I watched them because it it really opened my eyes to what gaps is <laughs> Yeah, sometimes you don't want your eyes to be that open. You're like, oh, wow. But like, yeah, I remember you saying you're like, I, I mean, I'm really glad that you like talk about this stuff. Um, but it's not always easy to hear. And so. Especially the die off video. I was like, oh, my God. I'm <laughs> terrified. <laughs> yeah. And I'm also excited. Like, how could that be? You know, like there's hope. So it, it was both. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah and like that's totally what you, you've been going through too it's like you're just basically going through massive die-off um and that's why you're going at the pace that you are and just letting it be what it is right and so like your feedback really helped me because I was like I definitely want to like kind of create a space energetically where like people don't feel like they have to do all of the things right away or else they're not doing it right like but that is also what's cool about the format is like you do kind of get to like pick and choose and i am glad that you watched them all up front because like no one prepared me for the depth of like what was actually going to happen and it was so jarring, Julie. It was, and like, you kind of like have mirrored that in your own way. It's just like, I knew it was powerful, but I had no idea. And 
so much, so much also of that. speaks to, like, if you think back over your life and all the junk you've eaten and all the, and not even thought twice about it. Mm -hmm. Standard American diet and candy and the, uh, whatever, you know, um, popcorn, whatever it is, you know, and the oils. And it's just been very eye opening to the amount that we, and that's just the food, you know, mm -hmm. the environment and the cleaning products and the, you know, it's just like you pull back the rug and you see one little thing and then you see a hundred, right? And you're like, oh my gosh, you know, so, but yeah, like I use beef tallow on my face now that I make myself the cream and I, you know, you know, like everything's changed with, you know, I don't wear makeup anymore, which I've really had in a while, but you know, the toxicity of everything, like it's pretty rude awakening. <laughs> it's everywhere. It's everywhere. And like it's somebody everywhere. needs to be like, nobody's talking about this. Like somebody needs to talk about it, you know? And there's right. only like so much time. And like, you know, when you meet with Becky in a meeting, it's like, how is she ever going to convey all that information to you? Which is why I made the videos. Um, but yeah, I think it's like really important to, I think at the four month mark to kind of acknowledge because you still feel like shit at four months, especially going through what you're going through is like super, super deep, right? The deeper you go, the deeper you go. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so I think it's really important to acknowledge the little changes and shifts that you do see uh, because those are kind of like the metaphorical breadcrumbs of like what keep you going. And sometimes it's really easy to overlook them, like even in ourselves. And um, yeah, so I'm just kind of wondering and like trying to draw out of you actually, maybe oh. even from your own awareness of like, you know, what are those like little shifts that you see that keep you motivated, that keep you like wanting to keep going, that keep you, you know, not just like, taking your jar of meat stock and like throwing against the wall, you know, what, what keeps you, what's like the little like hints and like, you know, clues of your progress that keep you going? Well, um, I think it kind of started with the carnivore, which mm -hmm. to me, because eating grass fed, grass finished was a big change and getting rid of all, you know, everything like that. The, uh, the vegetables, because I was mainly eating like really high vegetables, hardly any fat, very little meat um, before I started with the carnivore. And then since that time, um, and then going into the gaps, um, I've lost 40 pounds. It just fell off of me without really exercising. Mm -hmm. uh, now I'm able to go on walks. I haven't done that in a really long time. That just happened in the last two weeks. I started feeling like walking. Um, so that was a big thing. Um, uh, you know, getting off the Prilosec because of eating, you know, nutritious meat and fat. You know, uh, having, being able to be regular in my bowel movements, you know, not not having constipation or diarrhea. Hate to talk about that, but oh, we I, always talk about that. Where I'm from, a big part of life, right? <laughs> it's and always part of conversation on gaps. <laughs> yeah, you know that's that's like a real blessing. Not in the bathroom. That's good, right? Having more energy, uh, for the most part, sleeping better. Even though I'm still not sleeping, I usually, you know, get to bed usually late. Mm -hmm. uh, but and I wake up at about four or three or five and I have hard time uh, I still have a lot of trouble with anxiety but um, I feel like that's gotten a lot better I was up for nights and nights and nights at a time and just a walking zombie so I see a change there with doing mm -hmm. that so those are things that make me you know um, and this isn't gaps but when I got off the when I had the 
breast implants removed, which have heavy metals, mm -hmm. like the stupid thing that was. Um, my hair immediately, my hair immediately quit falling out. And I didn't even know it was, you know, I have a lot of hair. And so I just thought, oh, you know, it's just shedding an age and it would be like a nest in the bottom of the sink. Mm. I had, was able to take my first shower after that. After 10 days, you can't shower, you know, you're sponge bathing, whatever. But after 10 days, I took a shower and my husband is the one who said, look, there was one hair. Because <laughs> he's the one that always cleans it up, right? So, uh, I, yeah, I didn't even, I was, you know, so just detoxing, detox, getting rid of the, you know, each little thing, you know, the energy I felt, you know, uh, was different. It felt like, um, more of a, I can't even explain it like a tiger, <laughs> like, hey, you know, <laughs> Like, ooh, I have power, you know, I Yes. Yeah. Yes. Like really different than I've I, ever felt. I really have power. Yeah. yeah. But you know, but so I guess that makes what am I facing with this die-off? You know, <laughs> well, remember that you have power. Right. So, you know, that I'm more supported now in my body. And I noticed, you know. Like I haven't even really been exercising. I used to just do tons of yoga, but, and I couldn't lose weight no matter what I did, eating a vegan kind of, uh, you know, sad diet, standard American diet, whatever. But it's like now I'll walk by and I'll see these really defined muscles in my legs. I'm like, girl, I'm not even working. I'm not even doing yoga right now, you know? So like, where did that come from? And I guess it's just the, you know, protein and the fat building my body. You know, it's like, who's that girl? <laughs> la, 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 la. <laughs> I love what you said about so many things, but like the hair too, because you're talking about like the, the breast implants have metals in them. And I think I talk about this in one video or I might have where like actually your hair falling out is a way to detox from heavy metals. So like metals are, they act like minerals in the body. Like if you think about like the periodic elements, like the periodic table or whatever of elements, if you're like, you know, go back way back into high school science class or whatever. Yeah. But your hair is just like a bunch of like structured minerals or whatever and your body takes the metals and like puts them out through your hair to protect yourself and then your hair falls out and it's like a way to get rid of the metals and i i definitely experienced that with my hair or you know the same like thing like who's that girl because i'm like who's that girl with all that hair like my hair used to be so much thinner um which is just like you know you're talking about going on walks again getting off the Prilosec, um, not, gosh, there were like some really significant things. Like the sleeping thing, I can relate at the four month mark too. Like it's noticeably better, but it's not like a guaranteed thing yet. Like it's still kind of spotty. And I feel like that's like detox too. And you know, even now when I'm going through detox, sometimes it will like mess up my sleep a little bit. And so like, that's how it shows up but like your energy and you know your your like body is awakening it's like you were even like scared to say it kind of you're like i have power i have power i have motherfucking power and like for like the first time in your life maybe you're like yeah. or in a very long time you're like you're it's not even like your your mind it's like your body is like awakening to like I have power. I'm the one with the power. I have the power here. And I have the power to like make things, make my life, shape my life, make things different. And then how much you really can need to like draw on that when you are going through like, oh, I'm dizzy. Oh, I feel weird. I just feel, Marissa told us about her own Bumblebee apothecary, just calls it yucky. She's like, I feel yucky. And we were, we were laughing about how much of a euphemism that is because it's like, absolute hell sometimes <laughs> but it is it's like it's really yucky and scary and 
it's like how do I keep going but then yeah you draw on I remember when I started being able to go on walks again that is like that's not even just physical that's like your soul you know that's like something way deeper than physically oh I was gonna say sometimes like when I'm walking I'm I'm like walking up these hills like it's nothing and I'm like how can I be so strong <laughs> I'm so ill you know like it's like what's going on you know and then people see me and they're like you look fantastic and I'm like thank you but it's like the other things in my body are still yucky right mm -hmm. so but it's you know I think people can I think people just think I'm a crazy witchy artist and totally emotionally messed up I don't know but then again why do we care right but you know what I mean From the outside they look like well you look good and so you know I think an appropriate response to that would be you ain't seen nothing yet <laughs> Like, just you wait, you know? Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, and I think you touched on like a really um, important topic. And I feel like I have time for like a couple more questions and then we'll kind of like close out. But, um, you know, we talk about like other people's perceptions and how powerful uh, other people's perceptions can, like the influence that they can like have over our lives. And, you know, when we're on gaps, um, you're basically doing the opposite of what everyone else is doing <laughs> all the time. Uh, that's an exaggeration, but seriously. And um, how have you like navigated that? It's weird that I feel like COVID definitely helps as far as like, no one has asked me, I've never been in a situation where I like had to go to a restaurant ever since COVID happened or like, yeah, we do kind of like stay at home more, um, yeah. those kind of things, but there's still like really visceral, um, <laughs> I'm sure situations where it's like, okay, no, I need to do my own thing here. And it is different from everyone else. How have you navigated that? Or like, what, what has like come up for you around that? Well, um, that's, you know, it's kind of been a hard one. I mean, yeah, I hear what you're saying about, in a way it makes it easier because I don't get invited to go out to restaurants and stuff like normally we would be, right? And um, so that's helpful, but um, I'm kind of grateful for that in a way, but in another way, um, not to bring up a controversial subject, but you know, I'm not comfortable. Hello, here, who am I? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not comfortable with the way my body reacts to chemicals and having this heavy metals to take a vaccine. And I went to actually get it because my parents were coming here and um, I, they told me I'd have to be hospitalized when I filled out the form and I didn't even write not even a third of the stuff, not even a 18th of the things that were going on. I just answered the form. Mm -hmm. I'm not comfortable giving you this. And, and then, you know, my body started reacting, I guess the stress of it all trying to do the right thing and what is the right thing and what's the right thing for me and what's responsible and, you know, wanting to see my grandchildren again wanting to see how parents here. and uh and then them looking at me people look at you know like just go get the damn vaccine and like you're you know like blaming me and it's selfish. like well the th yeah, yeah selfish there's my thing but it's like you know when i've had experiences of anaphylaxis literally from even a food or medications I've taken that like my husband and I worked out a thing where when I would take a new medication, he, he, I would not look at what the side effects are. I would start taking it 
And then he would at, have me tell him what was going on. And then when I got to about the fifth thing, he'd go, okay, stop taking it. You know, because I have the severe ones. So that's been a real issue. And then my parents were here and, um, you know, I don't think they really understand because I guess if you're not, have not been through this, how could you understand? You couldn't, you couldn't, you know, so that's caused some, some hard feelings. Yeah. And I think you touched on something really powerful there too, is that like, they can't understand. And so I think for me, now I understand that they can't understand, you know, and that actually allows like a lot more compassion because it's like whatever perceptions they have about me, they're not seeing the full picture. They literally don't have the capacity to. And so however they feel is actually just more of a reflection on them than it is on me. And like, I know it's best um, for my body, but it is, it's really controversial because you have like these messages being like you need to do this to like be good to not be selfish right to like take care of other people and like put other people ahead of you but like part of the healing process and like part of definitely my journey of healing myself is like no I come first I come first every single time and I'm not going to apologize for loving myself for watching out for my own back. You know, I'm not going to apologize for giving myself what I need. And it's really interesting how it can be so offensive to so many people. Oh yeah. Um, and, and I feel like that touches on a deep wound that I feel like collectively, you know, we all have, which is that like, how dare you put yourself first, you know? Right. Um, and then that kind of like segues before we like really close out. So you and I just had a human design session. <laughs> um, and if you don't know what human design looks like, there's a video that kind of touches on basically like how you can work with your own unique energy blueprint imprint um, to regulate your nervous system, to regulate your energy and get into a healing state, like in your, nervous system wise and so we had a good chat about that um and I feel like we kind of like addressed some of those you know those like deep wounds of you know what feels right for you versus what other people feel is right for you um and we literally just had it so I know you haven't had much time to process it at all um but yeah I just kind of want to hear about how that was for you and like any like takeaways that you feel like sharing um well I got rather emotional several times and I could see that how um this some of these beliefs bs belief systems <laughs> that I have been programmed with um, have contributed to me feeling like it's not okay to take care of myself because I want to genuinely be there for other people and how that has really, um, I felt compassionate for myself and some gentleness move in and also kind of some feelings of, uh, wow, no wonder. Like, like I could see this as where I, part of this, I guess the emotional part is where I'm stuck because it's really um, been a block to healing, right? And uh, it's good to know that I'm not just a selfish bitch. <laughs> because I want to take care of myself and I want to live and you know um and no one's called me that but um I think you know in life especially as women we can put others first and just put ourselves in the closet and just say I'll be there for myself later and um 
I just know that right now, you know, I, I think it was, you know, I can't wait to watch the replay and to learn more about it because uh, the way it described me, it's like, oh my gosh, how could it know me so well, right? <laughs> wow, you know, so very, very enlightening. You are not a selfish bitch. You are the <laughs> selfish bitch. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I can, I can totally see, especially in, in reading your chart, how I'm like, you're like design because I think something that we don't understand and definitely not anything that's programmed into us at a young age is that by taking care of yourself, you uplift everyone around you, you know? And so when people are really triggered by the fact that you're putting yourself first, it really has more to do with how they feel about their ability to put themselves first. And so they're really mad that they haven't put themselves first in their lives, you know? And so how dare you be doing that for you? Um, other people will respond completely differently. And I've had so many people actually being like, wow, like the way you take care of yourself, like makes me wanna take care of myself more and like do these other things more and like, you know, thanks for just like being who you are, because that's like, ultimately, you know, I feel like Gaps is awesome, right? Like it's horrendously beautiful and <laughs> all of the things, it's life, it's death, it's everything. Um, but like with, when you add that element of human design, it's really about, you know, we get physically better um, and then we get to like actually play our part in the universe and like human design is kind of a map of like your energetic, like how you're not only how your energy works, but like your gifts, like what you're bringing to the table. And like, I asked, I was like, did you know like how much, I didn't like ask you this point blank, but I was like, did you know how much of like a leader you are and how much like you're really like designed to like, push the needle forward in these specific ways, you know, and I got emotional too. I feel like I've teared up talking with you a few times already, um, but it really just is so beautiful to see. And I love how, you know, we were even talking about how like, you know, your physical situation, how you feel in your body is even like blocking some of the, this kind of like divine like messages and intelligence that's coming through. And so uh, ultimately that is why I care about gaps because I'm like we all need to like do what we're divinely put here on earth to do and like what happens when we're all just like stuck trying to survive or getting lost in the medical system you know and so there's got to be a different way out of this and it's not what they say like the only way out is through it's not through avoiding something you can't jump over it you can't go around it like whatever that Barney song is but like you <laughs> <laughs> you gotta go through it and so I I love that yeah I do feel like being on gaps and customizing it to you which I feel like you know especially with your work with Becky like you've really done such a great job of and then having compassion for yourself and like reserving judgment in the process of like I should be further along or like whatever the stories that we have in our head right um but then like you kind of get to like that next level where it's like I have power, you know, and you're like feeling that on a body level and it's like, okay, what to do with it? And then I, I do feel like that's kind of where human design comes in. And then you were also talking, you know, I feel like a huge pain point for you, but like for so many other people is like, how do I navigate all this? You know, this is so much, this is so big, like what you have been burdened with as far as, you know, your trauma all of the physical shit that you have gone through, you know, even like listing out what, like an 18th of your, what's going on physically and then being like, you can't have this vaccine. You're not strong enough, you know? Um, you're, you're getting yourself out of that. You're not waiting for someone else to do it for you. And so I just wanna commend you so hard for that. And especially, it's such a gift for me to like, read your human design chart because like you're like how does it know me so well and I'm like now I feel like we've like automatically just gone to like this level it's like all right now that I'm like 
Well, the gaps um, has revealed um, the where I've been blocked, of course, physically, but emotionally too, because once you go through all this, you know, you've worked so hard for any little healing you get, you're not willing to sacrifice yourself. And then with the human design, it's like it confirmed it all, right? It like confirmed, oh, this is why, you know, I'm feeling this way. And this is like, it makes sense that if you're also, you know, physical, emotional, kind of the same thing, stronger physically, then emotionally you start maybe having more boundaries. And then the people that are not used to that with you um, are offended. <laughs> and then that's hurtful. Mm -hmm. But then it's also beautiful because you're really loving yourself and you're putting your, your health first, right? So it's a lot. <laughs> it is. And yeah, it's like, okay, like human design's like, here's your permission slip to be exactly who you already knew that you were deep down, right? And here's your permission slip to trust yourself, to be able, like you are fully capable of navigating this journey and you are, you're going to do it. You tiger. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> all right thank you thank you so much julie your time and energy is truly a gift i thank you for sharing your story i'm just so blessed to be part of your journey and i'm so glad that our paths crossed and you know i'm sure we'll we'll stay in touch after this absolutely you're just darling and you're just full of great, just great juju. That's my name. Great, ju great magic. I love it. I love yeah. it. Thank you so much, Julie. I'm so excited to see where your journey goes. And like secretly, I'm like, ooh, maybe we could like check in with Julie after a year and like really see what goes on, you know. But I'll just put that out there. No pressure. <laughs> I just, I'm, I have. I'm just so excited for you. I'm so excited. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right. Bye. Okay. Bye. All right. So there you have it. Um, I feel like the journey of healing yourself, you're, you're going to like run up against all of these obstacles that really like kept you from healing in the first place. And with gaps it's the very like physical aspects and i i love um and like what you're putting in your body right and i love how even though julie isn't ready to implement a lot of um the instruction and resources that are uh provided in the up level intensive that um she was saying like what she got out of it was just like this really comprehensive overview of what to expect you know physically she was you know she has all of the supplies and the items because it can take time to gather all of those but then like emotionally and spiritually too she like knows what she's getting into and then when she when she was like yeah and there's like a lot of technical aspects too so when she actually is ready to make or perform or um implement these basic components of gaps that she can revisit the video and really, you know, go step by step through the technical um, instruction as well. So it was really cool to see how those kind of like blended together and how it was eye opening to me how the up level intensive can really like meet you wherever you are and it can be whatever you need it to be at the time. Um, and then with the human design reading, it was just so, I love doing gaps, human design readings. I think it's like my new favorite thing. And so I know last time, and like I, I linked the video. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, please go give it a listen on um, human design and learning the energetics of healing myself and the energetics of maintaining my own boundaries has really, um, it's, 
changed my life. Uh, I don't think I would be where I am today without it. I don't think I would have experienced the healing uh, that I have experienced if, if I didn't know about human design. Um, and it was just so beautiful to be able to share that. Um, and then particularly with Julie, Julie, um, <sighs> I don't know if there's words, uh, but I like rest so much easier knowing that, um, her and people going through a similar situation as her, she has like a clear path forward now of how she can trust herself, how she can like tap into her own body's intelligence to navigate and decide what is best for her. And that like, ultimately she knows better than anyone. Not that we're not taking instruction by the outside, right? And she has that level intensive, She's getting one-on-one -on -one help from Dr. Becky. Again, that is my interview with her is, is linked below as well. I absolutely adore Becky. I've worked with Becky as well. Um, but yeah, just kind of having that human design element as the cherry on the top, like honestly, the more that I really just kind of like lean into creating for this channel and uh, my own healing journey, I don't think that I can separate gaps and human design because yes, there's a physical component to healing that lays the foundation, right? And then what do you do? What do you do once you kind of realize your power, you know, like Julie's very early in relatively, even though she's been on this journey for years, right? And to have that kind of like spark of like, I have power, you know, that was, that was just so, you can see my eyes like light up when she said that. I was like, exactly, you do, you know? Um, but yeah, anyway, I am very much looking forward to continuing, um, my gaps and my human design journey. I still have human design sessions open. I am opening more of them. I just love that. Again, if you don't know what I'm talking about, um, go watch that other video. Um, and if you want to book a human design session so that you can truly learn how to trust yourself, and not just say it or want to trust yourself <laughs> and not be able to, um, I have my email listed below for um, just, just send me an email, tell me you want to book a human design session and we will set you up. Um, human design sessions are 250 USD. They are an hour. Um, another thing that I feel called to note is that the up level intensive, um, the prices are increasing. So even last week, the up level intensive was at 343. This week it's at 555. By the time this video airs, I'm just gonna air it tomorrow. There will be three more days to get it at the price of 555. Then it will increase to seven to 777 a week later and we'll go all the way up to a thousand dollars um so if you are wanting the resources to really set your foundation um to really know what you're doing on gaps uh and having the resources and the information to really take you into that transformational state you know um that's an option too. After a week of the up level intensive being a thousand dollars, it will not be available until next year. So if that's something that you feel called to do, feel free. I will link that below as well. Um, and Juniper is coming back and yelling at me. So I think that's all I have to say for right now. I love you. 
Julie, you're amazing. Oh yeah, something I wanted to note when you're talking about the meat stock. So I think I just double checked and I think it's between um, the 35 minute mark and the 45 minute mark is listed on the instructional video um, that Juniper, can you hear her? Um, that's like where the full gaps version of making meat stock is. And I just want to like say out loud that it's okay to strain your meat stock um, using a sieve and you know, whatever I have linked on there, but just like a regular strainer, um, like a mesh strainer will do. The, the strainer that I um, recommend the holes are still like relatively big, but not big enough for like bones and stuff to get through, obviously. And I learned this in nutritional therapy school that actually like the most beneficial part of um, stock and like where all like the the minerals and stuff are is like, you know, like if you, you make meat stock, you know, it's kind of like the sludge at the bottom and like the little floaty bits that, that come through. Um, so when people overstrain their meat stock and what I, how I would, um, interpret this or perceive this to be is that like you put like a cheese cloth um, in the strainer so really like nothing can come through because those little floaty bits and the sludge at the bottom they still come through just like a regular sieve or strainer so if you're like not doing it that way because you're um, concerned about not getting like all the nutrients and stuff. I just wanted to clarify that for you and only to say that just the full gaps way is a lot easier and less time consuming. So if you are feeling, um, I mean, Julie, you seem like you're doing great, but if you're ever feeling like, oh, this like making meat stock is too much and how can I like keep up with this? Or maybe you're getting to a point where you can like tolerate more of it and you have to make it more often, but it's just like hard to gather the energy or whatever. Um, Juniper, Juniper, come here, come here. You wanna say hi again? Come here. Oh, baby. So yeah, that was just like a little nerd moment for me. And I was like, I have to tell Julie or anyone else who's wondering. Um, and this is like a really great example of how technical these things can get. But then, yeah, it is. I'm really glad that, um, and I didn't even intend this to happen, that that level intensive also gives you an overview too of what to expect. And I realized that I'm give, able to give you something that I definitely didn't have and that thrills the fuck out of me. So, <laughs> all right. Um, yeah, if you want to stay up to date with the price changes, um, I will link, um, you can get on my email list. I won't be putting up another video before the price changes to 777, maybe even uh, to a grand though. I'm not sure of that yet. Um, and also there are a couple gaps food lists uh, that I will also link below that I provide for free um, that have information that's not in the book. So if you are gaps curious, feel free to check those out. All right, I will see you later. Ta-ta.